Yeah, now you said yesterday, no matter win or lose, you'll get a lot of valuable feedback from this match playing Nishikori again. What did you learn from today that you can take with you the rest of the season? Well, I think generally today it was uh, maybe the best match for me this uh, this tournament. It finished the way it did, and uh, I was, you know, very close to to. Uh, Staying in the in the match till the third set when I broke back, and uh, you know generally I felt that uh, today overall from the shots I was feeling the ball better. First, first set I was uh, playing extremely extremely well, and uh, second set you know just a couple of points uh, in the beginning of the of the set uh, K played really really well to break me and then you know changed a little bit the man momentum. Later, I think the third set was a really high quality tennis. We both were playing uh, pretty good, and uh, I think it was uh, you know, a matter of a few points that uh, decided. And overall, I'm you know pretty satisfied with the performance, and uh, I think you know definitely it's uh, giving me some vision for for next days and next weeks uh, to uh, what to be focused on. So it was uh, purely like the U.S. Open, the first set you were playing high-quality tennis, and you had just mentioned that it was um, Kay came back. Was there anything else in the second set that happened with your game that um, made it so lopsided, the score so lopsided? Um, yeah, you know, in the first set I was getting uh, at least two, three, two, three, three points on my service games in the second set. Uh, I just dropped with my first serve percentage. I wasn't uh, making them as, as good as in the first set, so that made a little bit of a difference. Kay had more chances from the return games to uh, make an impact and to you know put more pressure on me. Obviously, you know that's uh, where he is better at. You know when the when the ball starts to be in play, and uh, you know he's very consistent from the back and you know can play without any mistakes for for a long period of time so uh, I think that was giving him an opportunity to uh, get back into the game and uh, yeah you know I think today when I was uh, serving well and uh, feeling the ball well I think I was uh, all the other parts of my game were following that and uh, you know that's I think good good part for me and uh, you know just I think in, in uh, Next match, or something, I'm going to try to be more focused with my serve to be uh, more more deadly. All right, I mean, obviously, different circumstances completely, but what, how much did you think of the US Open final during this match, and what were the biggest ways in which the way the match played out were different? Conflict? Yeah, I felt, uh, you know, I think the, the first set was uh, somewhere similar as the you know, match that we played last year. And uh, you know, that was my idea of how to play. And you know, obviously, <coughs> you cannot expect uh, everything what is going to happen on the court. You have to always deal with uh, certain situations and uh, ups and downs in your game. And uh, that you know happened today with uh, you know just a little bit of a change up uh, from the second set onwards. It was a bit different game, and uh, I think uh, overall, I think it was a very solid match for both. Yeah. How much were you thinking about the US Open final? Very much. Uh, you know, it was giving me a direction to think about the game and to uh, plan what I could do in the match. Uh, that was certainly uh, my my thoughts before the match and uh, during the match. Uh, that's what uh, my plan was, and uh, I think I was uh, pretty focused to, to execute those things. That, you know, the, the court over here plays a bit differently. It's, uh, it's pretty fast, the ball stays low, it's tough to open up the court and uh, sometimes, you know, you can see uh, and even us today are missing some uh, easier balls, which is not too often, but it's, I think, the case just uh, of, of the conditions. But, you know, the ball is a bit flying and the court is pretty quick, so you have to be extremely precise. Uh, you know, observing the, uh, the set and the players that seemed like he was going to pressure and keep it off at least the court and the baseline hit beyond. And then the third set you're trying to, I guess, advance and a chat a bit more. Was that to change the strategy that you're trying to do to get back into the match? To try to get back in control of the end? Well, yeah, I mean, 
you know, obviously it's always a, a match up with the games and, and the, you know, tactics, uh, who's going to put pressure, who's going to put more pressure on the other guy. Uh, that's obviously something that you can, it can be seen in uh, most of the matches, um, especially in the situations where the match is uh, going to go either one way or the other. Uh, in the third set, for sure, you know, K, you know, in the second set, uh, he was uh, definitely playing really, really well. And then, for me, it was uh, a plan to, of course, break that his rhythm to try to serve more consistently, which I did, and I knew I'm going to get a chance on, on the return games. And uh, you know, just uh, unfortunately, in the on four all game, you know. My first forehand on 15 all went, uh, you know, it was a, a small out uh, by challenge from K, and then on 1540 he hit a great return on the baseline. So you know, some some of those points could uh, play out differently, and, you know, could have been different. But overall, I'm you know pretty satisfied with the plan and the, the way I was playing. Uh, so with, with smartphones and social media, we're seeing the public is seeing a lot more aspects of players' lives. Uh, you know, from uh, practices and parties and stuff like that, but also players are tweeting about their you know, visits from open control and things like that. Um, I'm wondering if you have any opinion on the fact that the ITF this year made a rule saying that there was no photography, audio, or video allowed of the sample collection process and that you could get in trouble if you recorded anything. And I, I wanted to ask you this, especially because I know you're familiar with, let's say, Victor Troisky's case. Does it seem any view on not being allowed to record those sessions? Well, uh, it, uh, it is the case because of the rules, uh, you know, because of the anti-doping rules and, uh, you know, if you would be, uh, you know, digging the cases out and from uh, the all different sports, uh, you would be seeing that, you know, often uh, the, uh, the athletes are always going to try to challenge uh, the process how it has been done uh, by the by the people that were doing the testing so that's one of the extremely sensitive areas uh, for sure for the ITF and I guess for all the other uh, organizations that are you know doing the testing who well, are, are in charge of uh, their own sport and you know from my own perspective, I guess that's the that's the scenario, that's the that's the case that you know the, the players you know cannot call, catch or uh, you know do something uh, for their photography or videos uh, for the people that are doing the testing. So I, I but you know overall I don't have a, a really opinion about it that it's wrong or not. I'm you know doing following the rules and uh, even before I was not taking the photographies or anything from, from there. Last question, please. Thank you, everyone.